Welcome to another episode of the Strong Family Project Podcast. I'm your host, Joe, joined by the co-host, Mel. And we're going to be doing a little summer debrief today. We're going to look back at everything that happened during the summer and see what lived up to our plans and where we'd like to improve for next year. It's good to take a little reflection time and come up with a plan so that we can continue to improve year over year. Mel, read us in. Welcome back to the Strong Family Project podcast, where we guide you on the path to raising confident, independent, and resilient children in a strong family environment. Mel, rank the summer on a scale of one to 10. I'm going to say seven and a half. (laughs) Okay. And what would have made it a six? A six if we hadn't done as many outings as we've done. And what would have made it a perfect 10? What did success look like to you over the summer? If we could have gotten away as a family for several days. That was a miss. All right, good call. What do you have for us? In my recap, what I really wanted to talk about was how the most powerful thing in making this summer a seven and a half, or maybe I'd even bump it to an eight because it was quite good, would be just planning. And this morning I even asked Logan, I said, what do you think made our summer successful? And he said, planning. Like I didn't prompt that. He just said that. So what I did at the beginning, just as a little recap, was I sat down with each of the kids and I started a journal with them. And my first question to them was, what would you like to do this summer? Who would you like to see? Where would you like to go? What would you like to do or learn? And they each made a list and I actually compiled it into, if you've been listening for long at all, you know I like charts. And I compiled it into a chart just because this way it stays fresh. We can refer back. If we have a couple days where we don't know what to do, we can go and look at what the, the kids wanted to accomplish. And this really helped us to get things done. So each kid, for example, Logan wanted to 3D print. He wanted to get certified to use these power tools down at the art center that's attached to one of our libraries. And because those things were at the forefront, we ended up doing a little research and found this awesome program where he can go every Wednesday for free, work with these different guys learning how to weld. He made a cool knife and riveted the uh, handle, like the skills that I wouldn't necessarily have thought to look for him had he not shared that that's what he wanted. Henry wanted to go play soccer a lot. We went to a field as a family. He actually ended up finding out that the team he'll be playing for at school did pick up soccer twice a week. He did not miss a single one. And Everett wanted to learn how to ride his bike. He wanted to do a lot of outings to the creek, to Red Rock, open space for hiking. And we probably did that at least twice, three times a week. So because the kids, we teased out of them what they wanted to do and learn, we were able to then implement it much more easily. So those are some of the things that we covered. And then as a family, we just try to go do family outings as much as possible. Anything coming to mind for you? No. Or I can keep going. Okay, so at the beginning of the summer, we didn't know where to start. And because we've made some relationships with people here, we have some friends on that we've been here for a couple of years, we were asked to do some stuff. And we made sure that we would say yes, even if it was inconvenient. So at the beginning of the summer, this one family, Rodolfo and his family, asked us to go Uh, rafting which wasn't on our list it's something that I'm like yeah that'd be cool to do but I didn't know what to do with it and they invited us and it was Joe's busiest work day but he was like we're gonna go do this and I'm gonna just find a way to reorganize my schedule to make sure we can and it was awesome and then we went rock crawling well you and the boys went rock crawling which was not something I thought we'd ever do because we were invited and made sure to say yes despite the inconvenience that it might have caused in some areas yeah, it was Everett's first time white water rafting, first time driving a Jeep, rock crawling. The kids got to drive it by themselves. A friend, family friend Rocky was able to help them out and teach them some things about it. First time for Everett on the rope rock climbing. We did it with Rudolfo's family a couple of weeks ago because they, they were free and, and they jumped on it. The kids write a passages, Everett's first incline. We're going to finish off tomorrow with Everett's first 14,000 foot mountain, yours as well. Yeah. And it's just cramming it all and just saying yes. And a lot of these things we're not skilled at. So we're just saying yes and figuring it out with the people that are willing to support us. Exactly. And, and having that plan then filled in all the other gaps. So those are the bigger things, like actually going out and doing things and setting skills. But we also had daily disciplines that we made sure to stick by. So usually after school ends, I give them like a week or so and we don't really think about writing or math facts or whatever, Mm -hmm. but I know that it's important to 
evaluate as a parent what my kid might need to work on over the summer. So I've mentioned the journal a bunch of times. My oldest son needs um, to work on his writing skills. And I originally was just going to do the journal with him, but then I realized why not do it all of them? And it's been really fun. Henry and I write jokes back and forth. I learn things about the kids I might not have learned otherwise, but the whole goal at the beginning was to keep the writing skills sharp. So I even have a chart for that where every day the kids have to read 15 minutes. And I know for some kids, they just read for an hour a day because they love it. For ours, we just have to give them a little pressure. So they read 50 minutes a day, they write their journal and or edit it because sometimes that's required. I make sure that they read to their little brother who doesn't know how to read yet. I wanted to make sure his skills were strong. And then for Everett, I also had him work on his letters and writing his name. And I think a lot of times we have this idea in our minds, like, hey, yeah, we'll get to that. We'll make sure we, we do those things over the summer. But if a plan isn't put in place, and if I hadn't created that chart, so basically it's like a dry erase chart. Every day we check things off, and then I, at the end of the day, I erase it, and then we're back to it in the morning. We also started to... I read the Bible every morning and I wanted to make sure I pick out a verse every day and discuss it with the kids, which is something that they started at church camp, which was Memorial Weekend. And we just kept that rolling. But that probably wouldn't have happened had it not been on the chart. And one more thing I want to talk about that you started with the boys was Man Meeting Monday, where you would set a goal with them for the week. And that was a special thing we started over the summer too. Yes, to be able to accomplish all this, you need to have a system of constant communication to see if things are on track or off track. So we have sons. We had man meet, we started man meeting Monday with them, which is this, you call it whatever you want. It was just a check-in. So individually, I would ask them what went well in the last week. What do you need more support on this week? And I think I shared it before, but Everett would say something like, can you help me f understand what a week is? <laughs> That's what he needed more support on. He wanted to go to the creek. He wanted to climb the mountain. So he'd set his goals. And then I would ask me, what are the top couple priorities for the upcoming week? So it was just very simple structure where we'd meet individually, eye to eye, one on one, and discuss and let them be accountable for their week with my guidance and support and not me leading it or pushing it. They're the ones that are going to lead their weeks. And that was a bonus on top of our normal weekly family meetings, which is an important part of the strong family path. It was this bonus for summertime to get more accomplished because there was more time. And we wanted to make sure we valued that time we had and got more out of it. And of course, there's times in the day where we have to get work done and the kids have to entertain themselves and all of that. And that can be a little trickier. But if you have all of these things to at least bounce off of and have some goals, oh, you don't have anything to do, let's go to the chart and see what needs to be done. And sometimes it's pulling teeth. But at the end of the day, I know I'm helping them sharpen skills. I know I'm giving them purpose. And they're not just sitting around. And of course, we had friends over and did things like that too. But I think the planning really made it successful. When I look back, I feel like we've been doing summer for six months with how much we've really done. Agreed. And here are a couple of key components. I want to give you some takeaways. This isn't about our summer. It's about what you can do to improve uh, or actually reflect on your summer and then decide on to improve on next season. So first is the planning Mel talked about. Second is the structure she covered real quick. I think that's critical. It's it is easy and convenient to say that summer lacks structure. Let kids sleep into whatever they want to do. Don't let them do their contributions or their quote unquote chores. Let people slack on their workouts. Let people slack on their learning. And that creates, I think it really creates something in the child's mind that is dangerous throughout the whole year, which is they view those daily habits as negative disciplines because you're saying, all right, take a break. You did all these super hard negative things. Now let's just relax and kick back. And this is how you want your life to be. And I don't find that to be true. Those daily habits should enhance how you want your life to be. And they aren't negative. And so by saying all these things that are hard, let's not do them and not have any structure over the summer. I think that's a big loss and it carries over to the school season because now they see it as a burden to get to the next time where they just kick back and relax. That is such a good point. We, I didn't even say anything about that, but we did keep all of those morning routine contributions, things going strong. And actually, the Logan and Henry set their alarms for 6.30, which during the school year, I wake them up at 6.20. Mm -hmm. And at first I said, this is too early. Let yourself relax a little bit. It's summer. And Logan just said, I just want to get up. And he gets some of his things on the chart done first thing, so he doesn't have to think about them during the day. 
And I thought, why would I tell my kid to sleep in if they don't want to? And he's being productive. He's not getting tired during the day. It's not like he's overtired and should sleep a little bit more. And he chose that for himself. He wants to start his day strong, and why not? Yeah, there's a lot of structure to it. There are days that we did very hard things. We did the Father's Day marathon as a family across the parks. We, everyone's traveling 26 plus miles. Did the Pikes Peak climb with the boys. We did rafting. We did all these things. And guess what they did the next morning? They woke up and did their morning exercise, did their morning chores, had a healthy breakfast. And that structure is needs to be framed as a benefit to the children and not something that you look forward to the time where you don't have to do it anymore because guess what you should be doing it for your entire life right and we really want our kids to be skilled so we talked about some of the things that maybe i wish would have happened besides a family trip i wish i had and i still have time to do this but i wish that i had taken more effort in teaching them some more contributions i started out with teaching them how to do laundry and that kind of went off to the wayside so i need to be a little bit more structured because i want them to these are just things you have to know in living life i'm not going to just one day and say i guess i just don't have to do laundry anymore oh but i don't want to <laughs> okay let's just all do nothing then and what we make sure they understand when something when they don't want to do something, someone else has to pick up the slack. So if they leave their stuff laying around, it's as if they're asking me, mom, please clean up after me. And sometimes we actually make them ask me that so they can understand that it doesn't just magically get picked up. Laundry doesn't magically show up in your drawer. For one of my takeaways was I need to be a little bit more disciplined in teaching them some of those things, even though it might be difficult for me because I could just do it faster myself. Last question for a short episode today. What lessons are you going to carry forward from the summer to the fall? Everyone does summer planning. You should probably do some fall planning too. Start of the school year. Start of some, some other things that are going on that are just changes in the seasons of life. What are you going to carry forward and reinforce with the family? Not just us reinforcing the kids, but as a family come fall. I want to do some of the things on the chart over the weekends. So we do have a chart during the school year. It's a little bit abbreviated because of school and activities, but I'd like to continue the journal at least once a week. Even if it's just a check-in, let's say they want to be able to tell me something that they don't want to say vocally, they may want to write it down. I'd like to continue that and have that available to them to be able to write to me and not just say, I'm going to wash my hands of the journal till next summer. So if I had to pick one thing, it's going to be the journal. I'm going to pick two things. It's <laughs> okay. my own rule. First, we're going to meet on Monday one-on-one, -on -one, and we're going to carry that forward so that I can help with some individual learning and education for the kids because the fall, you have a lot less time capacity. Our older two are going to be in sports. The school started back up. A lot of the days will be filled, and they're still going to have these big ideas where they do all these things. Like We've been doing so much over the summer and need to help guide them to shift the gear into school mode where you need to choose one or two valuable things that we're going to get done over time. It's not going to be the daily adventure party like we have been throwing, and that is okay. And just help guiding them through that. That will require a little bit of one-on-one -on -one time. So I'm going to work on that. It will help them with time management. It's good to set goals in a busier season so that you know you can still get things done. You just need to temper them to be appropriate. And so there'll be some teaching on that. The second thing is holding standards. Oh, school's starting. Let's let's start having unhealthy dinners or let's stop doing our morning workout routines or let's stop doing this because now things are busier. These are life standards. These are things that we want the kids to carry forward. So it's a great opportunity when things are busy to show them that it's still possible to do these habits and that the habits serve them. They aren't like a negative thing that they have to do because they are told to. It's something that improves the quality of their lives. I love that. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Strong Family Project Podcast. We're going to need you to share and like it if you're enjoying the content. We'll keep putting more out for you. Talk to you on the next one.